Hey guys, just really quick, want to let you know this video contains graphic descriptions of violence involving firearms. And also when we filmed this episode, it was a while back and we were taking all the necessary safety precautions regarding COVID at that time. This is an important topic, so let us know what you think in the comments below and thanks for watching. I know for the rest of my life when I have kids, I'm gonna be worried that they might experience the same things that I have. It was about 11 o'clock. I was getting ready to leave the bar. It was just a normal day. I walked in with my friends and I was in my first period class. I was on the dance floor. He walked in with a gun in hand and started open fire on the bar. Just kind of happened in the middle of nowhere. Of course, you're just having fun at a concert and then next thing you know, it's massacre going on all around. Bang, 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 bang. And I just remember like yelling at my teacher, like we need to lock the doors right now. We're in a school shooting. I ended up running over to the opposite side of the bar. I didn't know where any of my friends were. It was chaos. Somebody has a gun and they have a motive and there's just not a whole lot you can do besides try to you know, get away. When you hear an RA, what comes to mind? But I don't really think much about it. <laughs> I mean, it's just another big corporation doing their thing. I believe in the right to protect yourself, to pursue life, liberty, and happiness. I believe guns are the great equalizer, and unfortunately, sometimes they have to be used. Anytime there is a mass shooting, it's always, oh, this is the NRA's fault. In fact, the only time the NRA members have been involved in mass shootings is when we're stopping them. The United States does not have a mass shooting problem. The United States has a mental health, a ignorance around the Second Amendment, and irresponsibility problem. You can't look at it in a vacuum. You have to look at the entire history. And in this country, every stage where liberty was achieved for a group, typically it was a war that was involved. I don't personally know anybody who's a member of the NRA. I'm not sure what they have to say. Welcome to the party, everybody. <laughs> I'm Antoinette, I'm 39 years old. I'm a mom and I help run my uh, family's small business. Hi, I'm Hayden, I'm 17 and I'm currently a senior in high school. My name's Heather, I'm a NRA certified handgun instructor and I'm just here to have a civil conversation about guns. My name's John, I work in the software industry and uh, I'm a mass shooting survivor. I'm Dylan, 23 years old, a two-time mass shooting survivor. I'm Taylor, I'm 20 years old. I was at the Borderline Bar and Girl shooting and I work with old people. I'm Maj, I'm the founder of Black Guns Matter, reform scumbag, just trying to do the right thing to defend the natural rights to protect life. I'm Jai, I'm 37 years old, I'm an abolitionist, I make my money as a criminal defense attorney. Can I get my NRA members on the left, or my mass shooting survivors on the right? I lost someone to gun violence. Uh, yeah, so four months ago was my school shooting. November 14th, today is actually the four month anniversary. I didn't know the two people um, who the shooter shot, but I did know the um, shooter. So I did, in a sense, have a connection to someone who died because he did commit suicide after killing two and I believe he's injuring three. So it's just crazy to be, have to go through that. I had a cousin who died ultimately of a, of a shotgun. It was an accident. His girlfriend accidentally shot him in the face with a shotgun. Damn. Yeah, and he lived for three or four months after that in complete agony and pain. I was, yeah, a little kid, so I mean, that was really the, kind of the first I had heard about something like that, right? And then, you know, of course, with the mass shooting, you know, I didn't know the people personally, but I've heard a number of stories. They all sound like great people. My most recent was last week, a classmate of mine, he got killed by the LA sheriffs. And then at his memorial service, I ran into my other buddy, uh, Martin, who just got killed, he was in the barbershop, somebody ran in, shot him last week. And I've had those experiences just constantly, pretty much since the high school age. During the shooting I was at, one of my best friends, he was like my brother, his name was Cody Kaufman. 
I pulled him out on the dance floor and we were dancing. We were having so much fun because he had just got new jeans that were like two sizes too tight. <laughs> and I had just gotten new boots. And next thing you know, you do one more line dance and it's, it's all over. I was at the Vegas shooting um, at the concert and then Borderline as well. I had lost one person in Vegas that I had tried to help. And then at Borderline, I had lost eight people that I knew. Oh, sorry, not trying to cry, uh, but yeah. Most of the people, not even just the people here, I think most of the people that's gonna be watching, you may know someone that has experienced that. And I think that the key to, to, to solving that is finding out where that comes from. If that person took life and then wound up taking their own life, there's pain there. I think in my neighborhood, we just get so numb to it. I just want to say I'm so sorry for everyone here. I can't imagine going through it. And um, I have a question for you. So you're in high school. Yeah. Do you feel safer or less safe being that your whole school is a gun-free zone? I guess I feel safer, but I think at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if it's a gun or if it's a knife or it's a bomb or if it's a car running into people. I think he was going to do it no matter what. Do you wish that there were there was more that you'd be able to have done. It must feel helpless. It was like I went fight or flight, so my thing was like, I wanna fight. I tried to do everything that I possibly could with the situation that I was in to be able to help. Um, it may not have been the people in the quad, but it was the people in my class. So my first thing was, how do I make them feel safe? So it was like unplugging a computer cart, putting it up against the door, stacking desks in front of the door, making sure that people couldn't get in. And I was watching like the news on my phone, and. You know, I'm not gonna tell them that like these people are dead or, um, or these people are injured because that's just gonna make it worse. I think that mass shootings are a problem, but I think that a lot of the time we're focusing on the wrong thing when it comes to mass shootings. It is a double-edged sword. We should focus on some sort of gun regulation, but at the same time, the other side of the sword is it's a lot of mental health. I think mental health is our problem in the United States because we don't focus on it enough. It seems like the other side tries to push like as if you don't care and I think we care very very much. People think that you know people who own guns just want to shoot things. <laughs> I mean personally I'd be terrified if I ever had to use it in self-defense and that's why the responsibility that comes with training is incredibly important. I own a gun. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> oh, Absolutely I'm a gun owner. I think one of the proudest things I feel is when I teach, especially women, and they send me a picture and they're like, guess what I just bought today? And I just feel like I've helped someone become safer in their life. So. For me, it goes back like, you know, in karate class as a kid, they teach you before everything, this is like, this is for defense. I'm not getting this to go out and use it to harm people. I'm, I'm getting it for that safety. And that's what it uh, boils down to for me is knowing that it's going to be a battle. You may win, but it's at least going to be a battle. It's not, if you, even if you just take the safety part out, just shooting is fun in general. Like going that's to the range yeah, is a, is a fun time. So they're used for recreation. And all like the time. also hunting. So yeah. many people, that's the reason they buy guns, is for hunting to provide food. I, it's almost like my equalizer. Yeah, so like it, it helps you and it gives you more peace of mind. Like, I am not as vulnerable and unsafe as people think. <laughs> people, will, people who don't know why he does. I've shot plenty, um, and I've been trained with you know how to use a firearm. Well, the reason I don't have one is simply I think because of that accident factor. You know, I'm, is this thing going to be locked up and safe at all times? You know what I mean? Like just to avoid some sort of disaster, I think all the reasons that you guys are stating that you do have one is completely legitimate. And I've certainly considered, you know, potentially purchasing one and, you know, doing it the right way, obviously, and all those good things. But yeah, I think that that's potentially just why I haven't gone there yet. I'm not against owning a gun. Eventually, I will, I believe, in the Second Amendment. And my dad trained me from time to time. He showed, I know where the guns are in the house. I know how to use them. I've gone shooting with my friends a handful of times. Like, I'm around it. I'm a part of it. Like, I mean, for me, it's really no big deal. It's just my own upbringing. Like, I just haven't gotten to that point of taking the action into going to get the gun myself. My dad was um, raising up St. New York, so he was around guns all the time, and we've talked about it. But it wasn't for like protection more, it was more for like that was your lifestyle. Yeah. 
right? It's like you needed to go out and shoot a couple bunnies. You needed to go out and shoot like a deer. That was like how you fed yourself. That's how you lived. And so I think if I was in that situation, definitely I would own a gun. But in a situation where it's like where I live, I feel safe. Now here's the thing. I can disagree with you, and I do. However, I am never, and anyone that tries to, tries to make you feel different than that viewpoint, I'm never gonna do that. Yeah. That's your, your right to not have one. I'm like, cool. When I go to my friends' houses that are afraid of guns, that I've known for 15 years, I make a personal choice. I don't take my gun in their house. I make a joke about it, and I'm like, hey man, if somebody kills me in your house, I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But just, just commending and making sure that if that's your personal choice, and your personal freedom, and your personal liberty, don't let nobody talk you out of that. I don't think about whether we need more or less guns in this country. I think about freedom. If you my brother and you my, or you my sister and you don't want a gun, I respect your right to not have one. If you my brother or my sister and you want more guns, I respect your right to have one. Where you lose me is if you use any of those firearms negligently or to rob or rape or kill unjustifiably. Then I don't really give a shit what happens to you. America has a mass shooting problem. Yeah. A mass shooting is different than, let's say, a murder. When you think about a mass shooting, the perpetrator, they're usually suicidal, right? And they have no agenda other than to take lives. And that's quite different than a typical crime that would involve a firearm. I and just, it's a phenomenon. I and think that's where I'm, I'm somewhat pushing that back. I think in order for us to solve it, we have to start looking at it. This is massive amounts of people that are still shooting humans, yeah. even if it's themselves. Right. If we're talking about stats, mass shootings, they would say, are not a problem based on the data of what that definition of mass shooting is, because that's less than 1% of all death in the country in sure. regards to firearms. So if, if I went just with that, I would not agree that there's a mass shooting problem. But how can I sit next to this young man here who lost eight out of 12 people that he knew in one juncture and say that's not a problem? One, we have a mass shooting problem, but we also have a mental health problem. Right. My age range from, I believe it's, 15 to 25, we have the highest depression rate in the entire history of the human race, that right. data can prove. It was the kid's birthday, the day that he shot up the school. If one person said happy birthday, got him a card, talk to him and say like, hey, I know it's your birthday next week, wanna do something this weekend. It's all about how are we making these authentic human connections with people. If we just talk to people, I think that's where, that's where our problem is. I think you, oh well, I gotta wait today. <laughs> <laughs> I believe we have a mental health problem. I believe we have a drug problem. I believe we have a racial problem. And the reason why I don't think mass shooting is a problem is because if we took all the guns, it wouldn't stop the violence. Like you pointed out, they could have used a car, they could have used a knife, they could have used a bomb. That would not absolve these deaths, uh, us from experiencing these things because they find another way. And by calling it mass shooting and saying, we need this gun control now. That's, from my perspective, just more of an opportunity to make another law that the police can lock up people in my specific demographic for. I think it's also important to know that I think it's something like 8.9 out of 10 mass shootings happen in gun-free zones. So in my mind, if someone's going to commit mass shootings and there's a sign that says, there's no guns here, there will be no bullets flying back at you versus there are trained people ready to do whatever they have to do to protect life here. Which place are they gonna go? Like, I couldn't believe the, um, in Nice, France on Bastille Day, there was like 86 people mowed down by a guy with a truck. Yeah, so but you don't hear anything about, we need truck reform or like truck violence. It's always gun violence. And you don't ever hear that term specifically with other weapons, I guess you could say. I guess one thing that I think viewers should take away from my experience is people go through crisis, but you should never give up on what you believe in and you should always push through it. Do you think that the United States has a mass shooting problem? Yes. Yes, I do believe that there is definitely an issue that needs to be addressed and resolved. Any mass casualty is terrible. 
I think if you look in inner cities like Chicago and Baltimore, the media is nowhere around and there's a mass shooting almost every weekend. So I think it's interesting to look at exactly why they pick the mass shootings that they pick to just delve into in the media. It should be harder to purchase a gun. So if you agree with that. Like, speak your truth, brother. There's something called the uh, gun show loophole. Think about it like the black market, right? Unless you have a storefront and you're telling you know, the government, hey, I want to sell guns and make a profit, you need to be certified in that sense if you're going to be doing that. Otherwise, it's completely legal to you know, give a gun to a friend or what have you. So I think that it creates an entire underbelly of the market that really shouldn't exist. I mean, you know, if we're not keeping track of who has a gun and where they're buying it, who's selling it, I think guns get in the wrong people's hands. I believe when the reports of the investigation came out of my school shooting, it was a kit gun. So he had actually like put it together himself. He also grew up in a family that, um, that supported guns. His dad, I think, was a bullet maker. I think people are gonna get guns no matter what. Like if they want a gun, they're gonna get a gun. So it definitely is different from state to state. Sure. In California, it's very difficult. In Illinois, it's difficult. And the crazy thing is you see a lot of gun violence in those states, but New Hampshire, it's a constitutional carry state, meaning that you don't even have to have a permit, you can conceal carry, and they have virtually no homicides with guns. So I'm just curious, you, what you're asking for basically is like a national registry for firearms, right? Uh, if we could do that, why not? <laughs> okay, so I feel like if you look back in history, it's never worked out for citizens. If you look back at Germany, if you look at Venezuela right now, Fair points. And I read somewhere that, uh, you know, if you have a controlled substance possession charge in the last year, you can't get a gun. If you have had a misdemeanor sentenced to over two years in prison, you can't have a gun. And these are, these are great safeguards. They need to just be imposed more. I think it should be easier. It's the only constitutional right that you lose with a conviction. Like, you come out of prison, you still have freedom of speech, but now you can no longer protect yourself. Now, I, I understand people can do stuff to relieve themselves, even of the right to life. I believe that. You can give up your right to life based on your actions, but I think we make it too easy to give up those rights. And then when you add in the racial component to these laws, that makes me even more of an advocate against these kind of gun restrictions. My opinion of firearms is that's the only thing that really led to abolition was when black people picked up guns. It's really hard to enslave people who have firearms. And so based on the history of this land, uh, my people in this land, I think every one of us should have a firearm, be trained and become proficient and learn how to use it. Teachers should be armed. I mean, I believe teachers that want to be armed should be armed. I don't think anybody should have to, you know, worry about the responsibilities that are associated with gun ownership if they don't want to. I don't think it's right for everybody, but obviously the more good people with guns, especially in a school, I think that would be great. Look at what we do protect with firearms, you know, our politicians, our celebrities. And for our kids, we protect them at, with gun-free zones and they're just left sitting ducks, right? So I think like if you have concealed carry permit holders, if you have maybe veterans or ex-law enforcement that are teachers, would you not want them to be able to protect your kid? If Otherwise your option is you're not protected, you have to wait 10, 20 minutes for the police to come with their firearms to come rescue your kids. So. I think that if you want to and you are willing to go through similar training, almost like a concealed carry, so you know what you're doing and it's not just handing a gun to some random teacher saying, here, protect your kids. Yeah. It's more of, more of so like you have the training for it, you have the background check like they said, like you almost are prepared in a way to do what is right. I don't think that a teacher can take, a, take the life of one of their students. Hmm, that's a good point. Like, hmm. like, if you think, you know, Mrs. Stewart, my 10th grade English teacher, is gonna be able to shoot one of her 16-year-old kids that has a gun, I don't see that. And to that point, the inner city and, and urban areas and things like that, the teacher-student relationship is not great. I've seen, uh, you know, videos on YouTube, teachers getting beat up and stuff, yeah. right? So do we want them to have firearms? 
we all have jobs, right? And we all have our roles within our jobs that we have to do that we know like this is what we're doing for today, every day. Something may change where we have to adjust to it and all that stuff. The teachers have their job where it's to teach these kids through their process of growing up. But now I have these sixth grade kids where there's 25 of them. I have to put myself at the point of this moment if the shooter comes to us, it's between them, me, and the kids. Now if something were to happen to me, these kids have nothing. I think with the precautions that we take already with the schools into learning how to close your blinds, lock your doors, do all that stuff, get to the back corners, be quiet, that is a good precaution because these kids, when they're going to school, they're going to learn, have fun, be with their friends. This teacher now has a weapon on them. Who's also to say that the teacher can't take action? I know for the rest of my life when I have kids, I'm going to be worried that they might experience the same things that I have. But I have to accept that if I do, I don't have control of everything. Myself and the other individuals that are the survivors of these mass shootings, we're not the voice for everyone's own beliefs of what they have gone through. Everyone deals with it in their own way. But we are sharing our experiences with you guys and hopefully that brings some light into obviously what goes on with it. You know, I try to not politicize it. If you think about it from a practical level, certain people shouldn't have guns, right? How do we, how do we identify those people? And how do we stick to the system, make sure that it's all backed up and safe? You know, I don't think that we should do away with the Second Amendment, but do I think that there's a, you know, a lot of bad people out there, I do, and should they you know, have such easy access to a firearm? I think not. I believe there's a way to prevent mass shootings. <laughs> I think that no mentally or physically sane person would commit a hate crime so big if there wasn't some underlying issue. If we find a way to talk about that and help that, that there's really gonna be no problem at all. A lot of the stigma around us surrounding mass shootings is guns, but I, it's, it's really the, the person. And I think if we're all more kind, we just, we end up feeling better, right? Well, if we're more loving, we create more understanding around everybody, regardless of race, religion, gender identity, any of that stuff. Um, if we're more empathetic, we again, we cultivate more understanding around who you are, and then there's less hatred because I understand what you, where you're coming from. And if we're more vulnerable, then we're able to talk about things like mental health. We're able to talk about like, hey, I feel depressed. Hey, I'm anxious. Hey, you know, I've been thinking about it. I want to shoot up a school. I like, and you're the only person I feel safe talking to. You know, if we prioritize those, we as humans become better, and then we can contribute to our global community. That's, uh, that, I mean, I love all that. I mean, being a mom, especially, I want my daughter to grow up in that kind of world, you know? And I think that those things are totally possible. I just think that also in the meantime, we have to address the issue that there is evil in this world. Like, I, we don't want it to exist. I don't think you can legislate it out. A good guy with a gun is gonna stop a bad guy, hopefully, with a gun. That's like, I mean, the best chance, you know? Trust me, I really wanna believe that and I do, that there is greatness in this world, there's kind people, that we can do a lot of great things. I've just seen too much now where it only really comes down to one individual has the mindset that this is what I choose to do today, and they take those actions, that's how the cards are played. I want there to be something that can be done to stop and prevent all these things to happen so that these three and you guys don't have to experience it one more time or you guys ever in your life to understand the shoes that we're in. You know, there's almost no rhyme or reason sometimes why these things happen. And I think that's why it's a problem. I'd love to wave a magic wand and make, make it so that it never happens again. It's not possible. There's no motive that makes sense to go to a bar and, and do what the guy did that night, right? America has a sickness. America's main sickness is white supremacy. It's an issue that we have not addressed. It's an issue that's written into the foundation of this nation when the founding fathers wrote, all men are created equal while holding slaves. And I think most of these issues are rooted in that. And if we just keep you know, putting a Band-Aid on it and don't get out and get that cancer, we can't reach those levels. But I think that's what it would take because that's what can start the healing process. In light of the coronavirus, Hey. <laughs>
<laughs> Namaste. That's right. Me wrong. Yeah, you know what I mean? I mean, how often are you going to experience like this to just be able to sit down and just be like, we got all these different...